Hi everyone and welcome to the 4Teachers channel. If you are new here, my name is Katie, I'm a primary school teacher from the UK and I'm currently teaching abroad in Hong Kong. And this is actually my second time trying to film this video. I started filming this a couple of weeks ago and I got about halfway through and I just had to delete what I had created because I didn't feel right somehow trying to put all my points together and explain how unusual this current situation is for teachers really hit home for me and it did make me feel quite overwhelmed. I know that working from home for a teacher is always going to feel completely unusual because unless you are surrounded by your students in the classroom it's going to feel really unusual and really really strange and that is something that I have found really difficult and really quite hard to cope with since all of this started happening so I just wanted to refilm the introduction in a more personal way and say that I understand if you are feeling lost and confused it's okay to feel that way it really truly is and I've gone through so many different motions with this and for me the most important part is staying connected with my students which is something that I've tried really really hard to do over the last 10 weeks that I've been teaching remotely. I also want to just say that I'm so proud of all the teachers around the world who are changing their methods and using new technology and trialing different websites and reaching out to their students in so many different ways. I think it's amazing that we're coming together as a community to continue providing some form of education for our students and I hope that by making this video today I can just share some of my tips and tricks and things that I've picked up over the last couple of weeks of remote learning and hopefully inspire you to try out some new apps and websites and little tips for routine uh, and setting up a sense of normal for you and your students while you are not in the classroom with them. So just to give a tiny bit of context to anyone who is new to this channel, I am from the UK and that's where I did my initial teacher training. I also worked in a school in Manchester for three years before I moved to Hong Kong where I have been now for the past four years and in Hong Kong we have been teaching remotely for longer than in the UK so as of the date of this video going up it has probably been around 10 weeks of online learning and remote learning and of course if you're watching this video from a later date then it might have been even longer that we have been doing that. I do feel as though in some ways I'm quite fortunate because we are a few steps ahead with remote learning. I've had longer to practice this, I've had longer to get used to everything and hopefully I can use what I have learned to kind of advise and to give you some top tips and suggestions for what I have found worked really well. Please also be aware that the expectations of my own school may be completely different to the school that you are working at and also my personal expectations may be different to yours as well. Things that I set out for my students to do might not match the ethos of your classroom and that's okay as well. Take from this video whatever is useful to you as a teacher. So the first thing that we have been doing for our students is we have been starting the day with a morning message. Now this doesn't have to be technical, it can just be a very quick video or typed message to say hello, welcome to the start of a new day. It's also a really nice time to ask questions or give riddles or quiz questions or shout outs to your students as well, just to give them a reason to check in in the morning and kind of a purpose for starting their day because I know for some students it must feel very very unusual waking up and not having their normal routine and this for me it gives a sense of routine and a sense of kind of normal for the students as if they're starting a new day. I would also like to point out that when you start filming your face for the first time it is going to feel so weird and so strange. I have actually been very fortunate in some ways because I've been making these YouTube videos for quite a long time now so I was a little bit used to the structure of filming myself and listening to my voice and watching myself on a screen was something that I'd kind of overcome the initial awkwardness for. But if you are brand new to this, it is going to feel so strange at first. I feel as though you look back and you're like, I can't believe I sound like that. I can't believe I look like that. And it's such a weird and uncomfortable feeling at the start, but that will start to feel more normal soon. I know that your students are probably watching a lot of videos on YouTube. That's kind of the generation that they've been brought up in. So it's probably less weird for them than it is for you. It is highly likely that you will start to feel more confident the more that you film yourself and the more that you make videos. Sometimes you wake up and you just do not feel like filming yourself on a camera 
I understand that not every day you feel like creating this kind of content and on the days that that happens I use an app called Chatterpix. This is an amazing app for creating a morning message for your students that doesn't have to have your own face in it. You can choose any picture, you can choose an animal, you can choose an animated person, you can choose a picture of someone that represents you, something that looks like you, and then you draw a little line across the mouth and you can get them to speak for you. The version that I use only has 30 seconds of actual talking time which is good because it limits what I can say it means that I get the points that I want to make in a little bit quicker and more concise and I think my students really like to see a funny animated version of myself introducing the day to them the second thing that I've been using with my students is Google Slides and Google Classroom in general I don't think I could fit everything about Google Classroom and Google Slides into this one video but I will try to make some smaller videos to help introduce you to the basics of setting up this with your class. If your class are already using Google Classroom, fantastic, it means they have a head start. If not, don't worry at all, but I would say that setting up the slides for my class with their home learning on has been a really, really useful way for me to organise my ideas and for my students to see the structure that has been sent through to them each day. I have created a template for my students using Google Slides that has an English slide, math slide, and then any other topics or different lessons that they do. And what's useful about this is that I can edit the slides, but I can keep the same template. So I might change the background colour each day to represent the start of a new day but I can just edit the content that's on there rather than creating a brand new set of slides each day. It's also really useful to have a place where you can add in links and websites and different resources for your students to access in one place. This system did take a couple of days or weeks to get set up with my students but now that they know the system they know that all of their work is going to be organised on the slides and that's where they need to go in order to access the information related to the remote learning. I know that some people might use different websites and some people might prefer using something like Microsoft PowerPoint if that's something that you're more familiar with then feel free to to use it. The reason why I like using Google Slides is because I can edit them and I don't have to resave it and resend it out every time. If you would like me to make more videos specifically focused on Google Slides or Google Classroom, please let me know down below in the comments and I will try to make some more simple step-by-step -step guides for setting up the system for your students. The next thing that we have been using effectively with our students is a website and an app called Seesaw. This has been a really great way for our students to upload their work and keep their work safe in an online portfolio, ready for us to check and provide feedback. If your school has already got Seesaw set up, that's fantastic. Hopefully your students have a little bit of an idea of how to use this already. I have actually already made a video all about setting up Seesaw assignments for your students on this channel. I will show it somewhere on the screen now and I will put a link down below in the description box of this video if you are interested in getting assignments set up for your students using Seesaw. If you have got any other extra parts of Seesaw that you would like me to focus a video on please also let me know in the comments but I just wanted you to know that it is a big part of the way that I collect the work in from my students remotely and how I check up on their progress and what they've been making and I do think that they really enjoy uploading their work to seesaw and seeing the feedback coming through from teachers as well. Another really amazing online resource that I have been using with my students is a website called Padlet. If you haven't heard of Padlet before I truly recommend having a quick look at it now. Even if you don't plan on using it for remote teaching it's still such a fantastic resource to have as part of your classroom. You can create boards on Padlet where you can create topics of discussion um, there are so many different formats that you can explore and you can get your students to respond to a question on there. You can get them to share examples of how they have responded to a project. Padlet is a really excellent way to get your students to share their ideas collaboratively and to look at the ideas of others. For me personally, it feels like a really nice way to create kind of a virtual classroom setting because the students can communicate with one another. But as the class teacher, you have the ability to look over the conversation and choose the comments that you want to approve or not approve. So your students have lots of freedom but also you are still in control of the content that they post on there which for me personally makes me feel a lot more comfortable as a class teacher allowing them to have some freedom but just keeping an eye on the conversation 
situation that's happening as well. I'm going to make some very specific videos about Padlet and how to use Padlet, so make sure that you are subscribed to this channel and I will get that content out to you as soon as I possibly can. Another way that I've tried to stay connected to my students is by setting up a YouTube channel. I decided to call it For Students as a bit of a reference to my actual channel. I think my class appreciate the link. The best thing about having the channel is that I'm able to make all of the resources private so that only my own class can see them. I upload the videos and set them as unlisted before sharing the link with my students. It makes me feel more comfortable knowing I can say their names and give shout outs without having their personal data shared for the world to see. I also think my class appreciate how personal this is as it's something special for them to check up on. I organise my videos into playlists based on subjects and topics. If you'd like a tour of my student YouTube channel or more information about setting up something similar to this, please let me know down below in the comments. Despite the fact that I am sharing a lot of online resources with you in this video today, I also want to stress the importance of making sure that your students don't feel as though they have to spend all of their time using technology or looking at a screen. I have tried really hard to create a balance for my students where a lot of their activities do not require them to use an app or a website or to spend too much time looking at a screen. I think it is fair to assume that at the moment a lot of people are spending more time looking at screens and watching TV shows and playing games and I fully understand that because I am just as guilty, I do all of those things myself, but I do think it is really important to try and find a balance for your students. So I try to make sure for every activity I give them that requires them to type or requires them to post something online, I also try and balance it with an activity that will take them away from the screens, something more practical that they can create they can always take a photograph of what they have created and post it on Seesaw for me to have a look at later on but a lot of this has come down to trust and I have to just trust that my students are doing the best that they can everyone is on their own path dealing with what's happening at the moment and you do not want to add too much stress or pressure to any of the families or students that you are working alongside if there is anything else that I can post at the moment to help to support you as a teacher please comment down below and let me know exactly what I can create to try and help please make sure that you click the red button down below to subscribe to 4Teachers and give this video a thumbs up if you have found any of the content to be useful. That will really help my channel to grow. Thank you so much for watching and I will speak to you again in the next video.